To my right is Bounty Law Series lead and Jake K. Hill himself, Rick Dalton. And to my left is Rick stunt double Cliff Booth. Once upon a time in Hollywood, Quentin Tarantino's ninth and penultimate movie before retiring from feature films cleverly showcases the writer-director's encyclopedic knowledge of cinema and pop culture while also serving as a loving tribute to a bygone era of films and stars. Despite incorporating many elements of the filmmaker's signature style, dark wit, moments of explosive violence, kitschy references, a great vintage soundtrack, and an overall cool vibe, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood shows a more sentimental side of the Kill Bill filmmaker. And yet, it also displays many of his self-indulgences and weaknesses. It's not Tarantino's best work, but it's still better than the best efforts of other filmmakers. We get into a fight, I accidentally kill you, I go to jail. Anybody accidentally kills anybody in a fight, they go to jail. It's called manslaughter. The movie reflects the sensibilities of an older and possibly more thoughtful filmmaker than the indie bad boy who stormed the industry back in the 90s with Reservoir Dogs and Pulp Fiction. There's still an undeniable coolness exuded throughout this film. Tarantino largely focuses his story, which is primarily set over three days in Hollywood circa 1969, on washed up actor Rick Dalton and his best pal, former stunt double turned flunky Cliff Booth. Rick is definitely played with feverish desperation and crumbling vanity by Leonardo DiCaprio, while an almost transcendentally cool Brad Pitt delivers his best performance in years as Cliff, whose sun-kissed appearance belies the inner darkness that's cost him everything but the affection of his dog and Rick. Cliff is in many ways a more interesting and complex character than the narcissistic and fragile Rick, but DiCaprio and Pitt share a breezy, boozy chemistry that makes them great foils for one another. The rest of the film follows actress Sharon Tate, a beauty whose star is on the rise as Rick's is on the decline. Portrayed here as Rick's next door neighbor, Sharon Tate, of course, was a real person whose brutal death by followers of cult leader Charles Manson has overshadowed her brief film career. Margot Robbie plays her with a free-spirited vivacity, but the character of Tate herself is not well developed. She's more a symbol of Hollywood dreams than she is a flesh and blood protagonist like Rick and Cliff. In the end, you're left wondering what Tarantino wanted audiences to feel about them or his film, save for leaving with an appreciation for Hollywood's yesteryear. That may be enough for those who want to ruminate on the film industry, but emotionally speaking, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and its characters never quite register as strongly as many of Tarantino's other films and protagonists. Tarantino has once again assembled a stellar ensemble cast that includes several veterans of his past films like Kurt Russell and great new additions such as C Steelers Mike Moe as an egotistical Bruce Lee, and Julia Butters as a precocious child actor Rick meets on the set of a potential comeback role. The film is as much a love letter to the Los Angeles of 1969 as it is to the films, TV shows, and pop culture of that tumultuous era. Tarantino and his team have painstakingly recreated the greater LA area of that period and its many landmarks. But did we really need to see every street and stretch of freeway Cliff drives along? and those unnecessarily bloated stretches only make one feel the film's nearly three-hour runtime all the more. The film is also chock full of asides to Rick's faux movies and TV shows, from his heyday as the star of the 50s TV show Bounty Law, to his later spaghetti westerns, war movies, and exploitation films. These are often hilarious and spot-on send-ups that lovers of B-movies in the golden age of television will appreciate and laugh at more than casual, and frankly, younger viewers who lack the pop cultural context to get the references Tarantino is making. Indeed, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood's effectiveness depends in large part on one's fondness for the bygone era Tarantino is honoring. But there are times where Tarantino veers into self-indulgence. There's another and arguably larger curiosity factor for those going to see this film, and that's the Manson family murders. His interpretation was always going to prove divisive, and the end result most certainly will. As exploitative and jarring as the whole sequence can be, it also gives the film a jolt in its uneven second half. While this climax never matches the masterful building of suspense in an earlier sequence where Cliff encounters the Manson family on an old movie ranch, the home stretch reminds Tarantino fans of the edgy provocateur he started out as after sitting through two plus hours of slow moving industry nostalgia. Hey! You're Rick f***ing Dalton. Don't you forget it. 
Quentin Tarantino doesn't quite deliver a grand slam with his penultimate feature film Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, a languid but interesting exploration of a particular time and place, and a loving ode to the pop culture that informed his particular sensibilities as an artist. But it also doesn't always land as viscerally or emotionally as it could have, and it never quite develops Sharon Tate as more than an idea. Still, the respective performances of DiCaprio and Pitt, and the film's meticulous attention to period detail, are all great and keep you invested in where this cruise around Tinseltown will ultimately take you. Line. Ha! For more movie reviews, check out what we thought of Batman Hush and The Lion King. And as always, be sure to follow and subscribe to IGN wherever you like to watch. What does IGN even mean anyway? It means whatever you want it to mean.